Welcome, guys, to the Unashamed podcast with Phil Robertson. Of course, you got Al, you got Jace, uh, the sidekicks. And uh, today um, we get into some pretty good stuff about, you know, it doesn't take much for us to talk about our dogs because we love them uh, and they're part of our hunting experience. And so uh, we're going to get into what makes a good Labrador retriever. Uh, so it's a pretty good little point counterpoint going on between Jace and Phil. You enjoy that. Uh, we're talking about worship today, uh, which kind of came out of our last discussion with Abraham. Uh, really interesting. I think it'll, uh, give you some different insights. Uh, so I'm glad you tuned in. Buckle up. Here we go. Hey folks, Phil Robinson here on the podcast. Look, one of the companies that, uh, is one of our sponsors called Patriot Supply. They have everything from pancakes to chocolate pudding. It's about a four-week supply. You can save a hundred bucks for a four-week supply. Of this you say, why you? Why did you go get in bed with them? Because everybody at some point in time probably will face an emergency. They have foodstuffs, water filtration, and whatnot to get you through. I mean, listen. We just went through an eight-month flood down here. Now, Miss K, we could still get to our abode, and we stockpiled enough groceries to ride it out. If the water had gotten any higher, got in our house and all that, we would have needed My Patriot Supply and some of these very things. We just take it for granted. In case something happens, floods, hurricanes, you know, the Russians take the power grid down, whatever, four-week food kit, you got breakfasts, lunches, dinners. This thing, these things will last 25 years. It's a pretty handy thing to have just in case because I'm looking worldwide at a lot of disasters. If one comes your way, you'll at least be eating. So it's long lasting. So you can prepare with field.com today field.com today check this out uh it'll give you a little more peace of mind than you might otherwise not have by having plenty of foodstuffs when you need it check it out do what you think i'm all in with it i am unashamed what about you Breaking news on the river. I feel like this is now the place where I can reveal this, so at least I have a some somewhat of a controlled setting. Is this like your so, confessional? Like your, <laughs> <laughs> your, your play. You know, here's here's you remember, you know, we got an issue. I mean it's it's August now, so we're we're looking toward duck season here. You got the whole planted. The river finally fell. So we're, there's a little bit of hope here. You know, we had a nine-month flood. Mm-hmm. But our biggest issue in the duck hunting world is your dog, who is the greatest dog in the world that I've seen. Greatest retriever ever. Except. Right, ranks at the top. That he whines consistently. Yeah. And uh, it's maddening when you hunt with that dog for 60 days because he's. <laughs> and it never stops. Would you agree with that? It, he he wants to be great. He is great, but he has a hard time just sitting there and waiting. He wants to go 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 all the time, right. and he whines when he can't. So keep well, it's going. It's nothing personal, but I mean, right. we've moved past the denial of which some people <laughs> were experiencing that this was a problem. Because he, he, he is the Johnny Ringo of tomb, the Tombstone movie. <laughs> That poor and soul, the, he's just too high strong. He's the canine, canine version of Johnny Ringo. So okay. dad dealt That's with it. it by turning his hearing aids off. Yeah. Is how he dealt with it. Well, but the rest he of just us says, don't have hearing aids. He's the greatest dog ever. Is that a dog or what? I'm like, yep, but he, he won't stop whining. And yeah. it's loud. I mean, it's louder than you think. But the older he gets, you can't hear, whatever. So last year I tried an experiment. I paid an obscene amount of money for the greatest dog I could find. And uh, he was an okay dog. Wasn't as good as the one we had, but his problem was he had some kind of condition and he goes blind. And I, I was like, well, what is wrong with this dog? But, you didn't see you know, I, Yeah, couldn't see I never heard that. I, I mean, yeah. I knew something was wrong with him 
That's we were hunting. I never like. heard it. You need so, to be able to see to be a good material. You well, see. yeah. Okay, it's a little thing. So anyway, yep. but I found a great home for him. Young guy he hunts a rice field because out there it's it's open because the dog loves to hunt. So now the breaking announcement is: I now have a new dog. I've had him one week. He's called Biggin. Biggin. B i g n. And look, here's here's the funny part. <laughs> B I G I N. No, no, just B I G N. Biggin. You just got to say it. Biggin. And, yeah, there you yeah, go. And the N's got a little, got a little mark over. A little squeak. Well, you can put biggin. a mark over it if yeah. you want. So biggin. Un, biggin. So here's Stress the un, Here's biggin. the funny part. <laughs> I got it. The guy who brokered the deal, y'all know him, W E. Uh, Phillips, he, aka Red Dog. He used to be on Duck Commander videos. Is that was what was that was one of the boys that caught, got caught up in the controversy? And I tore his tail up at about fifteen. <laughs> that's him. Yep, that's him. Yeah. That's him. And he's he stayed around. Yeah. No, I think that y'all were like eighteen. Now he was eighteen. Someone that's said he 16. was smart enough when he heard that I was fixing to whip the whole bunch, young teenage boys drinking a little few beers, <laughs> and I didn't like it. So I went down there and said, if I quit getting drunk, y'all are too. So get over, back over the car. Yeah, Someone that said day. that he uh, slicked me. I found about it. Found out about it years later that he had eased a magazine <laughs> between his pants in and his, his underwear. Yeah, he got smart. that magazine down there where the where the where the licks would were not be as he's, painful. He's the he's one of those guys where you know he was repulsive and obnoxious at that age. Oh yeah, and he never really never got out of no. it. But if you if he hadn't have come to Jesus, I mean he'd just be one of the most miserable people because he's hard to get along with yep. in Jesus. You know, <laughs> yeah. he's he's very. Uh, I consider him a good solid brother. Oh, he is. He's a good guy. But I, I, but here's what happened. He brokered this deal because that's what he's doing. He's living in Arkansas now, but he felt bad because the guy where I paid the money for this lab that went blind, he was like. If that dog, if something happens like the dog going blind, yep. I will replace the dog because I paid a lot yep. of money for that it. That was nice of him. Well, he didn't do it. Well, so, that wasn't too, too nice No. <laughs> so <laughs> W.E. It happens. D- yeah, I got slicked on that. So, <laughs> so W.E. starts feeling guilty. So he's looking for me another dog. Surely he didn't reach into his pocket. I don't. That's not a WE move. Well, let's don't get crazy. You yeah. can never do that. <laughs> There's nothing in the pocket. That's what I thought. So look. So he calls me up and says, "I got this dog that this guy wants to give for free." And he told me that at the end. He's like, "I found you a dog. It's a yellow lab. Uh, his name uh, is Biggin. Nothing that a little black spray paint can't cure. Full daylight. I mean, I think it looks like grass." You know what I mean? Yep. It, it, in the setting. You know, you seen that yellow grass? I we think can that's die him if he stands out too much. If he stands out too much, we'll die. But I don't I, mean kill him, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I mean die, literally dye him a different color. Because it's more important D-Y-E. in a duck hunting situation to be camouflaged. Yep. So let me get to the point. So this this guy from Alabama, of course, I was wondering what is wrong with this dog? Because W is like, oh, this dog is fantastic. He's three years old. You know, he's. So I'm like. But Has he hunted the, any? He's never duck hunted. <laughs> he's only dove hunted but they said, want to get rid of him well yeah and for free <laughs> so the guy comes over from alabama you're a little bit suspicious of this yeah, well this is a strange story that's why i'm sharing it i'm seeing what america thinks about it but uh so he comes over guy from alabama couldn't be nicer here's big and what when he said his name is big and i look and i said well this is the smallest lab dog i've ever seen what could be big about him well, he said, but when he was born, he was the biggest puppy of the litter. So we caught, named him Biggin. But he just didn't get big. He never got big. But he's he has a, a big heart, maybe. Well, Female or male? Male. Well, here's the problem. So he said, well, I know you're wondering what the catch is. So we go down to the pond. I watch this dog now, That's work. what I'm wondering right now. <laughs> I, yeah, I watched, I watched him work, and I thought, what could possibly be wrong with this dog? He's awesome. Good on dummies. Great on dummies. And so he said, unproven on ducks, but good on dummies. He said, here's this dog's problem. Because I looked and I was like, what are all these stitches and staples about? Uh, Half his hair was gone on all sides. He just had, he looked like he had been split apart and then put back together via sutures and staples. I was like, did you, did he get run over? That's what I thought. He said, here's the catch. This dog, if he sees another male dog, he, he's going to fight him. He said, and the problem is, 
he's always going to be the smallest dog in the, in the fight because look at him. So he said, what you're seeing, this guy runs a dog kennel. He's like, but this dog literally attacks all male dogs, and he gets whoops. So now we have the, the, the status report. One dog is the greatest of all time, but he whines. Yep. To the replacement animal is a dog. We don't know yet whether he'll retrieve a duck or not, but he wants to fight every dog he sees. Yeah. I, I'm just looking at it. Whiner, or you want to you want to fight it out for daylight? I every, like every. the fighter. I like. Well, we're not around a lot of male dogs, so. Well, right now the only problem is, yeah, we'll have to keep your dog and this dog apart. They will never be able to simulcast in the duck blind. That won't work. So the assessment from observing Biggin is that he does not make friends easily. He has no friends. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even like humans. They do share yeah. that your dog and my dog have that in common. The first time he saw me, he went. Because he knew what was in your heart. You didn't like him because you were whining. That's why he never did like you. Well, That's why Cy didn't like Cy. No, he, he lifted Cy would silent. turn his head like this to look for a duck. And Blue would see him, he'd go over and pee on his he'd boots. He'd pee on him. He was <laughs> saying, was, basically, piss on you because he didn't like you. Yeah. But my problem is you're ragging my dog's name, and your dog's name is Blue, and he's black. <laughs> Came from the – there were three <laughs> three male dogs. One had a fluorescent green collar. One had a white collar. And one had a blue collar. They were all the same age, and they were all three males. They were identical, black labs. So the guy that owned them put a different collar on each one of them so he could tell know them which – tell mm-hmm. them apart. And that's where it all went wrong. And he went on, put them through the, ra- through the routine, and I'm watching them, and he said, which one do you want? And Blue had the most drive. Yeah. And to this day, oh, he's – Got plenty of drive. drive I said, I'll, I'll take the blue collar when he seems the one has the more the drive. I didn't realize it had been very difficult in the future to keep him seated there without nervous it's energy. It's impossible. He's not, it's in his DNA. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. But he does I'm, have gray beard now. He's six years old. So. Well, can we rest him and try my dog this year? That's all I want to do. But you got to realize my dog has never been duck hunting. So there will be a learning curve. Yep. But I'm, he has the drive. When when I when it's time to retreat, is it possible that if we worked them, if they could get along enough, Phil, they're not. I you, just told you he has a problem. He, he I'm just, just saying, if he watched another lab retrieving ducks, he may say, "All right, I no, get it." No, he he will he, die for trying to for prevent that from happening. We're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I got him. This dog does not work well with others. There had to be a catch. You're going way out on a limb. Let's go with a dog that's never retrieved. We have the one of the greatest retrievers of all times. You know, he goes out. Yeah. If there's teal, small ducks, he'll gather up three, four, Doesn't and matter. bring them. But then he whines in between retrieves. Mm-hmm. I can't handle it. It's yeah. dry, it's literally driving me crazy. You could do that. We could try your dog, old Biggin, but uh, just remember, He's I have really blue. Big. I want some of his offspring. So they're bringing down this month a female when she gets in heat. And I want a puppy off of that because I said, get a little low-key female that's a good retriever. And the guy said, great, great little retriever, John Gimbert. Yeah. He's got a dog. She's she, no whining. She's very obedient, quiet, meek. Well, I said, fine. maybe we cut that bloodline a little bit and maybe we'll get a puppy out of him. I'm going to try that. That's fine long-term. But short-term, let's try this yellow lab and – and to have some silence and we can try in, it. in between retreats. We can try it. Okay. So I, maybe our audience needs to give us some feedback on whether you would have a whiny great retriever mm-hmm. or a anti-dog unproven retriever who is little in spite of his name. Yeah, but that, that, does, that doesn't impress I've you trained, that this dog is small yeah. and is whooping, yeah. you know, or trying to all other dogs. Well, I, if I, we I, were I in, like the, if we were in the dog fighting, like some of them, like who was the quarterback that got fired? Got we're not, in, we're not that. into that. Yeah, but yeah. I, that's this dog. That's I don't why. like I don't like fighting dogs. <laughs> no. I like dogs that go get the ducks and bring them back. Well, I'm thinking tree a squirrel. That's yeah, good dog. I think this dog, you know, has the perfect home. There's no dogs around at my house, and uh, except little Hazel. And he doesn't seem to mind her, so we're we're all right. So, so did he charge you anything for this animal? Zero. 
That's what I thought. He said the only catch is if three he, years, and I'm giving him to you. This dog has a problem who fights with everything, but yeah. we don't know whether he retrieve a duck or not. That's <laughs> not know. a whole lot to go on, Jason. I'll, I'll tell you. I agree, but it's it costs zero. And he said this. He said, "How many days do we have to try him? What do you think? What's his? He's never duck hunted. I think we need to try him the whole season. I mean, let's let's give him three weeks. But the progress report as we go forward, yeah. how, what kind of progress report? Day one, day two, day three, I after think teal day, season, 16 days of teal season, how many days put up with him 16 well, days? Well, you know, you're not going to shoot yeah. teal half the time. Well, well but if you do, I, I look, I'm telling you, I feel way better Who's going to get dog? the ducks if this dog doesn't bring them back? Who's going to volunteer me. to go out there in the muck and bring them back? I'll okay. go out there and get them. All right. I always said a young man was better than a dog. Well, right. You can say, he's over on the right. And a young man will say, okay, and walk over and get him. A dog, oh, blow the whistle, point your hand. Sometimes you, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. The blue, blue trusts me, implicitly trusts me. When I say I move my hand, blue knows, oh, there's a duck there. And, I've, yeah. and he's saying he's over there. Well, he ain't lying. And he, he this trusts me. This dog works great off the whistle, all that. You blow the whistle, stop. Yeah. Go to the left. But it is a dummy. You know what I mean? So yeah. we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Hello there, folks. You know, we live in some dangerous times. Uh, I never thought I would see a day to where, when I give a Bible lesson on Sunday morning, 150 people, pretty tough neighborhood, but I'm not right next to the college and all, so you'd think, you know, you'd be fairly safe. I have law enforcement personnel on the premises. I'm armed. It's just, especially in lieu of what's happened in the last decade and all the mass shootings we've had, we just live in a dangerous world. Well, here's a group that can help you arm yourself and be prepared before an attack occurs because you never know there's so many when that day will come to where you are. Tac Pack is the premier monthly subscription box for military, tactical, and Second Amendment enthusiasts. You need to check into this. $49.95, 50 bucks roughly. They'll ship you at least $100 worth of gear. Companies like 511, Hexmag, Mission First Tactical, Armaspec, and America Grip to only name a few. They can ship you AR-15 parts. These shooters have more firepower than most of us are carrying around on us. And it's uh, you need to be prepared because you never know if the, it's happening in Walmart parking lots, concerts, churches, synagogues. We have to be vigilant. This group will help you out. Uh, you need to sign up before September the 1st. Uh, they can ship out AR-15 parts, EDC tools, knives, cleaning kits, and a whole mix of other tactical gear and apparel direct to you. Uh, do this before September the 1st to make the deadline. Included is an item from Adaptive Tactical that will stock your AR. America made, American made shooting gear from our friends at OST, Survival Gear, get gear from Survival Frog Company. Five awesome items they'll ship you. Go to tacpack.com when you use the promo code FEEL at checkpoint. They'll ship you an ABKT folding knife, absolutely free. You always need a good knife. Times go bad. So if you're into tactical gear from the best companies for half the price, TACPAC is for you. TACPAC.com and get the September pack today. TACPAC.com, TACPAC.com, offer code FEEL. Don't forget that. It's a sad day in America when we have to arm ourselves, but I'm afraid that day has come, ladies and gentlemen. So this group will help you out a whole lot. I just want to give you a heads up on that. I love you. Be careful out there. Be prepared. What kind of spiritual matters are we discussing after the dog? Well, um, yeah, now that we got the lab situation uh, taken care of, you know, last time we talked about Abraham and really how amazing he was in his faith and 
Obviously, we talked about the resurrection, but something struck me out of that discussion that I wanted to bounce off of y'all today and get your, your take on. In Genesis 22, you remember when we set the stage that he went with Isaac, it was his only son, <clears throat> and he basically looked at the guys that were with him, and he said, we're stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there because, you know, he was going to sacrifice him. That's what God had told him to do. Mm-hmm. Was this where the talking donkey was? No, uh, no, that's later. That's Balaam. Which is an incredible story. Yeah. yeah. We got We need to do a whole thing on on that one. Yeah. Well, and you, he, here's people, what he said. When people doubt God, and look, if you can get a donkey to start talking, <laughs> pretty much do anything you want to do. So I, I just love can this. Can you imagine a talk like if you had a donkey and it just started talking? And look, and Hollywood took that. You know that's where they got the idea. And now all animals talk on all these movies you know what i mean well they shrek all, has the talking donkey and i'm like this was together. yeah this was god's idea you, you don't realize how many principles come from the bible you That's know right. what i mean you got a talking donkey you know they're doing that what seven thousand years ago by the way <laughs> since you're there uh what are the odds that some department in salt water because the evolutionists would say salt water made dogs and humans and elephants and everything else what department in salt water said, let's make some that really excel in retrieving birds. Let's make some like that. Let's make some that are great at herding sheep. Yep. Let's make some that are that that, that will tackle that, yeah. hogs. That point at point birds out. So you have all it. these dogs, but they have all these skill sets. What department in salt water decided, let's give this particular brand of dog this skill set let's give this one this skill set if you just add yeah. it, if you just add it up you say you know that's that's pretty amazing that you have all these dogs animals that that are are that have a skill set and i mean it's zoned in on that mm-hmm. i mean blue is a bird retrieving dog right. it's oh it's in his dna you what department of saltwater said let's just do this in the algae it just said let's and not only that, think about this. You go back in time, not very far, long ago, three, three, two or three, four hundred years ago, and back. The you depend on they were dependent on these animals to help get food to oh, eat. Oh, you know yeah. What I'm saying it's not like now you think, well, my puppy, I don't have to. I just go to the store. Well, what what happened if you had to get all your own game? And those guys, they look, they got birds. These. You know, they train these falcons. They go in, they catch a, you know, get the rabbit, bring it back. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. there was all sorts of hunting animals that were naturally in them, but they assisted humanity, yeah. which That's is That's why amazing. I say as an outdoors person, the more you get into the details, I just don't see how people come to that conclusion. It, it, it seems like you would have to be insane to say that it just randomly happened and then through natural processes you got what you have now, which all stopped somewhere because you're not seeing the process anymore. Right. They're like, well, you got to look at it for millions of years, but you would think you would just have stuff popping up. 90% of the creatures on we the have, planet we haven't amazing. even discovered. Pretty you amazing. know, when you get down to the, <laughs> That's right. It's, it's just insane to me to say that something wasn't behind it. Blue runs out there in the brush raises his head up, cuts a hard right, and runs for 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards. Thick brush, button willows, tall grass. You couldn't even get through. He raises his head up and he turks out. We saw that duck swim that way, so I point over there. The duck is fully alive, just crippled, can't fly, but is going through the brush and you look out there, and you give him about five, ten minutes, and you look, coming out of the brush, Blue's got this duck still alive. With his head sticking up. Head well, he uses still. that. No, he, he takes the training. And, and just what's in his DNA. His own DNA. For lack of a, you know. That's I mean, right. That, that's what it is. That's correct. But then he uses that nose. Because you like that's a detail you don't think about. If you're going to be a great retrieving dog, if you're going to – design something have to have that that good nose which is an intelligent design because you look at that dog well he's got to have a spectacular nose and that's what he does they use that no i noticed that this new dog i got i mean that nose is to the ground you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so once you get a duck in his nose and and he's like this is what i'm after i think it's just giving too much credence to salt water i mean i'm sorry (laughs) yeah well salt water's what they're into now i mean it was 
I mean, it was the gaseous mist, the Amino big punch acids, that yeah. hit the whatever. You know, I mean, you read all that <laughs> stuff and you think, where's the intelligence? Right. That's what I'm after. Yeah. All right. Back to the Abraham story, Al. <laughs> all right. So, so, so Abraham says, we will worship. Talking about him and the boy. And then we will come back. So yep. we talked about last time how he was basically reasoning to the resurrection. That's what the Hebrew writer said. Yeah. In other words, he was going to kill him. And he just reasoned that God would raise him up. But it's, what was interesting to me, and this is what I wanted to bounce off of y'all, is that this is the first time the word worship appears in the Bible, is here. And it was really interesting that what was about to take place, that was the word he used with this sacrifice. Think mm-hmm. about that. Hmm. And uh, so it got me thinking about this concept of worship. Because if I said worship, I just threw that word out and, and people are watching and listening. If we say worship in 2019, I mean, what's your typical, what's the first thing you typically think of, you know, singing or, you know, praising God at church or, you know, I mean, think about worship, but the Bible has a much broader view of this concept. And and that's what I want to talk about a little bit today is the idea that it's really bigger. People have it just kind of contained to a 20 minute, 15 or 20 minute segment. And there's no gathering here and there's no pomp. There's no ceremony. Mm. It's just a little glimpse of, of one little period of time to where worship is in, inserted. And right. you're like It has nothing to do with a congregational meeting, mm. singing. So it has nothing to do with it. In fact, in this case, it's it an was, event in his life and who he is. In fact, in this case, it was going to be a very gruesome thing. That's right. That, that was going to happen. Mm. Now, the idea of sacrifice, of course, comes from, we, we saw that way back at the very beginning with, you know, with Cain and Abel and Noah. So there's the idea of the sacrifice was giving God the glory. Well, that becomes the kind of the concept of what we talk about with worship. But I thought at, at any time, at I mean, any it's time, it's really an incredible, fascinating point that worship was introduced right here That's in this right. setting. Yeah, because you're basically he gives him the plan: all nations are going to be blessed through your offspring. Now take your offspring and sacrifice. You know what's him. weird, Al? But he he used the word worship because I think in in that moment he was saying, "What is worship? It's that you're God and we're not." And look, think about it. Uh, therefore, Romans 12, the section, the, the chapter on worship. Yep. Therefore, in view of God's mercy, Abraham had it. Yep. In view of God's mercy, you want me to do what? So he said, yeah, we're going to go over here and worship. In view of God's mercy, he said, offer your bodies, it is pretty amazing, as a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. Right. He brings that same concept up all those thousands of years later. You're like, hmm. Exactly. Sacrifice comes with worship. And That's well, right. this is the epitome of it, literally. That's right. And and Dad's referring to Romans 12, 1 and 2, because he says right after that, this is your true and proper worship. So that same concept that was introduced way back there with Abraham, and you're yep. right. It, it's the idea of saying, God is God, I'm not. And therefore, but, my entire life. Is and like, a certain I, amount of suffering is intended here, may be required of you. It may be hard. As, as you worship. Yeah, right. I mean, there, here's a guy, he's using the word worship, and they're up on a mountain, just his family, in a difficult situation, not knowing exactly how this was going to turn out. I mean, I absolutely love this. I think this is in contrast to what happened at the Tower of Babel, which was God told them, I'm God, you're not. Go scatter and fill the earth. Let's fill this thing up and, and multiply. You would have seemed like they would have been jumping up and down about that. But they said, no, nope, we're going to stay right here. Build a tower to the heavens. And the key phrase there, in contrast to this, is make a name for ourselves. That's right. So my point is, when you fast forward now, thousands of years later, to churches, I think you have the same problem going on from Genesis 11 to Genesis 22, you have people who take church buildings and they confine their worship there, which is in some cases not really worship. It's just a ritual, a ritual yeah. routine. Yeah. But you don't have that worship taking place out in the real world. 
And so you it's have all, It's all structured. It's structured, and they're trying to make a name for themselves, whatever denomination, whatever sign. And, and I really think it's the same concept yep. that you see here at the beginning of time, our time, from a Genesis standpoint, happening in our churches today. Well, I, uh, right. I, I just jotted down hearing you all elaborate on this. And you guys are pretty sharp. I can't help it if I did sire you. <laughs> uh, is that like a backhanded yeah, compliment to yeah, yourself? Yeah. What is bad than last time he told I wrote us down this, our intelligence didn't pass through the genetics. So. I wrote down this question in view of Abraham and worship. Will at any given time, will your faith prevail at any time? Well, if you read Romans 12, you know, you say, hmm. Yeah all the time you have to be ready for that moment when it's time to worship God, asking yourself a question, I'm calling on my faith. Will my faith prevail? And Abraham, no wonder he's called the father of our faith because look, just view what was before him. Yeah. Wait right here. We're going to go over here and we're going to worship, but we're going to, we'll be back. You're like, hmm. He knowing he was told to kill him. Well, let, let me. Here's another one to blow. To you. sacrifice. Here's him. another one to blow your mind. So, we know in Job, the book of Job, there's a conversation going on in the heavens between the evil one and the Almighty about Job. So, by the way, I mean that's recorded to know. So there are conversations that happen in the heavenly realms, and any of us could be the it next be, show. It could be concerning us. That's right. Yeah. So, so the Almighty allows the evil one to attack Job. He said, just don't kill him. Job gets the word he lost all of his stuff, his animals, but back in that day, that was your wealth. Family. And, and then he lost all of his kids in a terrible accident. And you know what? The, the ones you love the most. This will blow your mind. You know how he reacted? He tore his robes, which in that day was grief, just grief stricken, which we all can understand. He falls on his face, and Job 1 says, the Bible says, he worshiped God. Now, he worshiped God when he received the worst, po he and lost that just everything. came down. That's exactly right. Whew. Which, of course, proved God's point that he was a trustworthy man. He knew his heart, and the evil one said, "Oh, that's just because you blessed him. You're giving him all this stuff." So the Almighty said, "All right, take it away, and let's see how he reacts." That's why, to our listeners, y'all don't need to forget this. There's a lot of ups and downs in life. Just remember, be ready at any given moment to call on your faith will your faith prevail because you're looking at a situation that's not good and suffering is involved well, what are you going to do well here's abraham and the job of old the, the the epitome of faith you're like the hall of faith here they are right. this is the way they operated right it's worthy of note now it I, is i like act 17 you know we i know we all love this chapter because when we're studying with people who don't know Jesus, this is a, or, or who don't believe in God, this is a good place to go because Paul, he run up on a group of people in Acts 17, 23, he said, I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship. And these were great thinkers, best minds yeah. of the day. That's right. But they, these people had created these things and these places where they were going to worship and so he gives an explanation he says i even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown god so they were just worshiping something unknown as a symbolic and a place. make sure they cover it on yeah the basin. and he said now what you worship as something unknown i'm going to explain to you <laughs> <laughs> and so then he he has this nicely packed sermon that basically answers life's three questions on where did humans come from, what are we supposed to be doing here on the planet, and how are we exiting the planet, you know? Yeah. But one statement he makes in there, I think, because he, he was in the context of worship, where, what, and how, and who. Right. He says, the God who made the world and everything in it is Lord of heaven and earth, and he does not live in temples built by hands. Which flies in the face to everything that we as a culture think about worship. We think you go to church, you go to the church building and look, and or look, temple and to do what? And we're going to meet today 
in the sanctuary. Yeah, they call it the sanctuary. And the hallowed ground is where the preacher is standing down there, <laughs> and he's always up higher than you. Uh, by and the way, what's... by the way, when I'm giving my lessons at the local church here, I'm up there. You know, you say, "Why do you go up and you sit down at a little table and you with your Bible? You're not standing there because I don't want them to get the idea." I'm preaching down to them. I'm I'm over them. I just say, let me. I just sit and I give them the lesson, but I just want them to know. Look, they're not paying me anything. I said, so I'm not doing it to get your money. Right. I'm here free of charge, but but I'm with you. You're the brothers, the sons and daughters of God here. I'm one of you. I love you. I hope you love me, and I'll give you some scriptures. But the here. point That's is these. People and y'all, you, I know y'all are familiar because your your parents were raised in a church. You know your history came from they where there's churches that had the opinion it's more important of how that goes. Yep. During during what yeah, happens? One hour. Yeah, at that hour, how you worship than anything else. We need it, to correct that if we can. We're well, trying to I, I here try today. To. It makes people, what happens, they get in the routine, the habit, and the tradition of it. And, and I think they take the Bible and kind of try to justify what they're doing because of some of the problems that happen in the, the letters to the churches. But no matter what they do, how, how, do they, how do they stack up with that verse I just read? God does not live in a building. He, he's not worried about this place. You remember what he told the woman at the well in John yep. 4? He yep. said, you know, he challenged her life, which same concept as what we're talking about, Abraham. He's out there making a life decision. Yeah, on the whether Samaritans he's going, were worshiping one Jerusalem, that name of that mountain, and yeah. you Jews worship in, in, in Jerusalem. You know, she well, was she was like, "Where do I go?" Well, what, yeah, but what happened was he challenged her life. You know, he's like, "How's your li- life's all fine? I'm gonna go back and tell my husband." He's like, "Well, the fact is, you've been married whatever it was five, six times, and <laughs> and you're now living with a guy who's not your, <laughs> not husband. Even your husband." What's so what's so not funny but interesting? So he challenged her life. Well, she knew. How does he know this? And then she got religious, which is most what most people do. You tell them about their life. What's going when on? Someone outside is the reading your mind and dictating it back to you. You're like, whoa. It's like, well, where am I supposed to go to worship? And but Jesus made that famous statement: "There'll come a time," which was fixing to happen in Acts chapter two when the Spirit was unleashed, that people will, they won't go here or there to worship. That's They'll right. worship in spirit and in truth, which gets back to the same principle. In Genesis 22 with Abraham, right. here they are on the side of a mountain. Plus he said, which is the kind of worshipers that God seeks. Yeah. He, he, this is the kind. Right. Wherever you are, girl. And, you know, of course, she was profoundly impacted and, well, she was saved over it. She and just to left. be clear, we're not saying don't attend a church and be a part of it and participate in praise and worship. All those are great. The problem is if that's all you got, and that's not yeah. who you are. It's the smallest part. You're just like part. the woman. It's well, the smallest, it's the smallest part, part. It's the smallest right. part of your words. It's I a think, great thing to come together. It's awesome. I love but it. But it is the smallest part. What yeah. changed my view on it is when Duck Dynasty happened, and then we uh, we started doing events. And some of the events, you know, probably only half of them are involving churches that I do. I don't know about what your percentage is. But, but I'd go to some of these churches, and uh, – I would just be so impressed with their worship that it wasn't, it was more what we're discussing today. It wasn't about a ritualistic, you know, legalistic setting where they thought you had to go to some place and follow some rules. It was more an experience. Celebratory. Com- yeah. Coming out of that, they're sons and daughters of God. They have Jesus Christ, the most awesome being ever on the planet as their Lord and brother, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is an experience where we're all together, where we're going to say, you know, you're God and, and we're not, and be excited about it. And I think that's what's appealing and why I, I started looking at how we do things. And I'm like, that that's this is the way it should be. When young people, and the reason I'm singling out the young people because a lot of these churches that we're talking about, they just get older and older and older. And you think, well, what happened? They just die out because it becomes so ritualistic. Because young people go in there and they look around and think, I thought you said y'all were going to heaven. 
you know, it's just miserable, cold, dark. And then when you see a certain agenda put forth and then you watch their lifestyle outside of the building, young people, the one thing they see more than any, anything else is sincerity and what's real. Yep. And that's they right. know that's not real. That's why they, they're so, I'm out of here. One little simple truth, what they must, we all must realize, all right, you were there for an hour or two on one day. Once you walk out that door, Al, oh, the, the, the worship begins in earnest. That's right. Who you are and how's your faith and how do you behave Yeah. until yeah. the next appointed time. So you have to understand that or you'll lose sight of what worship really is. Well, which was the point Jay's made from John 4, the woman at the well. You know what's interesting, Jay's, <clears throat> is that you, you brought up Acts 17. One of the most amazing things I've ever witnessed was when we were in Athens filming for dad. Dad did a movie called Torchbearer. Oh, um, it was fantastic. It was a great way. movie. And yes. somebody's going to ask now, so I'll tell you, Amazon Prime is where you can find it, and also Citizens United at their website to find the movie. It's a long story on why it never released big, but the movie's amazing. But in in we were filming a scene where dad, and, and we're having to film, we're kind of, Gorilla style because you know we we did some sets and stuff where you could but this was more we were just kind of run and gun so Dad's on Mars Hill <coughs> which is where Paul was in Acts seventeen yep we're literally standing on the same hill and it was it was kind of it was a granite hill remember Dad and it was real slippery because people mm-hmm. are crawling all over it yep and so it got dust on it so you kind of watch yourself or you'd fall people there from all over the world all over the world they're crawling all over Tourist. this big rock and right behind it. Is the was the is the ruins of the Acropolis. Yep. So as you're imagining Paul giving this speech that you read about in Acts 17, he's referring to the Acropolis, which is right above. Yep. Well, Dad basically memorizes the whole thing that Paul said in Acts 17. So him with the beard and the you know the burlap shirt he loves, he's just standing there giving this speech. But we're kind of disguised with the cameras, so we're getting a couple of different angles. We had a couple of camera guys there, and I'm just kind of everybody's just kind of watching what these people are. They don't know what he what he's doing. And he looks like a prophet or something. He's up. They thought he was just like having a moment. So what here's what was amazing because we had to film it three or four times to make sure we got it. But I'm watching the people, and every time Dad would finish the thing, I mean, some of them were in tears. I saw Applause that. Applause would break out, you know, because they thought it was like some kind of theatrical. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what it was. It was like, who? because we're in Europe, so it's like yeah. a lot of them didn't recognize They're like, this, this must be a smarter homeless guy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. And look, he had it down like he was like, he delivered it, and, and he was looking over Athens, and he would refer up to the Acropolis. And I mean, you nailed it, you know, in the. In I the, just tried to put my mind in place of the Apostle Paul, I said, right. and it made me uh, be very convicted. I said, it elevated, I'm standing it? where right. the Apostle Paul stood delivering the same speech That's right. almost 2,000 years later. Right at, they, like, remember, they, they, they even had a little plaque there. Oh, yeah. That said, you know, this is it was probably a square where he stood. Rock. Yeah. And and some guy there said, yeah, that, that's where he stood. That's probably where he stood. And I mean, of the I put my feet firmly in place right there where he was standing. But I was stunned on how the audience reacted to that. Well, and that was my point. So it was interesting because we were talking about worship. That was a worship experience for a lot of people. Sure. And it was for us too because I was in tears and dad was just like bringing it, you know, because he was sort of getting his inner Paul while he was doing it. But there we were on that rock (laughs) doing the exact same thing. They actually were not supposed to have cameras there. Right, we were gorilla. So they had sneaked them in, (laughs) and then this was just an ad lib, get up there and – and they didn't know I'd memorize that whole section. They were just waiting on what I was going to so say. By the way, we captured it. If you watch the movie, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. And it was fantastic. But it really did in in and of itself. And I think that's the kind of what we're talking about is you, the experiences that you have. And sometimes it is through hardship where you worship. We hit just this. Well, uh, just by this, the way, out that on the Apostle Paul's part and my part 2,000 years later. That was an impromptu worship it service. It was. It was. No doubt about it. I had one last week in a nursing home with your youngest sister. You know, I mean, she's she's gone now. Dementia. She can't recognize anything. 
And yet we were there, and so we wanted to basically say goodbye to and her. And she's been there. a very godly woman. Oh, she's yeah. the reason you're a Christian. That's right. And she and she helped us, me and Jason, Willie, and all of us as much as anybody ever has to grow. And I wanted to tell her that. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm crying, you know, talking to her. She's she's out of it, but she's looking at me. But you know, it's just vacant stare. But it was my opportunity, and, and it was a. I mean, I felt like a word. We prayed over. We prayed for the Almighty to take her because we didn't want to see her just stay here like that. Yep. But I'm telling you, that was as that was as close as you can feel to God as it would have been if I'd have been in a church service somewhere, hearing a sermon or something else. It's those are the moments I think in life where God becomes real. The text: We don't want you to be ignorant or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe Jesus died and rose again. That's, That's what right. Paul told the Thessalonians. That's an apt text for that moment you had right there. Exactly. Huh? Well, I don't know. She's if any- in good hands, and, and a lot of people would say, good night, the woman's suffering from dementia, and, uh, dementia, and you say she's in good hands? It's in good hands. You know, I, I think people, you know, gather – and, and they're drawn to churches that may suit their personality or their, you know, belief system right. or capability. That's why there's so many. I think the biggest argument from the world on why they don't come to Jesus is they're like, well, look at this mess that is religion. You have all these different groups. How do you know which one's right? right. They bicker. They fight. They're, some of them are so radical and evil, you know. I mean, you think about all the people that have died just in the name of religion in yep. some fashion. And so, you know, even at our church, we've seen that thing evolve and, and the same kind of concepts that, that we're talking about. But I ran across this verse. I want to share it with you. In Matthew 26, right before Jesus goes out to be arrested, and he does the Lord's Supper with his disciples, and, and he knows they're all fixed to turn. You know, the next thing that happens after this is that Peter denies them. But Jesus knew, okay, this is fixed to get tough. I, I, you know, I'm fixed to literally give myself for my creation. And he goes through the Lord's Supper, and then he gets to verse 30, and there's this one little obscure passage that says, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And I thought, here, here's Jesus and his disciples. Here's Jesus knowing what's fixed to happen. And he chose this as an opportunity for worship, kind of like what Abraham, you know, mm-hmm. did with his son. But it, it's more real to me here in, in trying to get our worship, like we're saying in Romans 12, 1. It's more of a mindset every day, 24 So You worship God every day right? that's why and, and jace, mainly when bad things are fixing to happen that's, right. that's you know, why jace it is interesting that in romans 1 i mean 12 2 it says offer your body's living sacrifice holy pleasing to god that's all the time this is your true and proper worship do not conform to the pattern of this world check us out jace but be transformed by the renewing of your mind what you mm-hmm. just the point you just brought up. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You say, Boy, what a what a what a statement, you know. That's right. It begins, don't operate like these other people. You be different. That's right. You make sure your faith is intact. Right. No matter what. I think the uh the Christian music world in the last two and two or three years have really made some strides in coming up with heartfelt relationship, kind of the stuff that we're talking about here today, type songs, mm-hmm. like worship songs that you can do together that are not cheesy. I mean, the number one thing when you get to become in public for Jesus is not being cheesy. And what I mean by that is the church building structure, basically you say, well, how they reach the public? They basically are concerned, a lot of them, I'm saying the ones that uh, uh, you know are ritualistic, they're basically doing their own thing in there, going back to the Tower of Babel philosophy, thinking if we can do this right, somehow that makes us right. And then their outreach is what? That sign outside that they change every week. You know, look, those are the cheesiest things. Every time I drive by them, I read them, they, no wonder they're not going in there. That is so cheesy. <laughs> Little puns and, yeah. you know. And you like, then you look remember. at the movies. Look at the Christian movies that come out. There are so few 
that are not cheesy. Are you saying? Are you uh, telling me when you drive by and it says this church is prayer conditioned? That that doesn't just make you want to run in there. Exactly uh, look, my point. Why? And you got to remember too. I left what, the what? large group where we are, and I volunteered to go across the river at a little small place. Well, the great song service when I left the large group of a thousand, fifteen hundred people, whatever it is, I, when I left that group, and we started with about fifteen or twenty, we. You say, How, how's the song service? I said, take heart, brothers. There's not the 15 of them sitting in there. I said, take heart. I said, I'm in the book of Acts. And I said, that's when the church started. The first 3,000 uh, obeyed the gospel. Peter told them, you know, repent and be baptized. They were all baptized. 3,000 added to their number that day. I said, some of you are wondering, because uh, there's not the 15 of us, what about a song service? And I'm like, well, I said, we have good news. I said, I'm in the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, that original 3,000 that we were added to, uh, to, to the fellowship, the breaking of bread, to prayer. They were filled with all. The apostles were doing miraculous signs. They sold their possessions and goods, uh, goods and gave to anyone he had need. They continued to meet together in the temple courts, no church buildings at the time. In fact, for 300 years, there were no church buildings. They broke bread in their homes. There they are gathered up in their houses. They ate together uh, with glad and sincere hearts. They praised God, enjoying the favor of all the people. They said, well, what do you know? And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I said, now we'll go through the book of Acts. When we get to the scripture that talks about the song service, that's when we'll start singing. <laughs> well, I said, in the meantime, if any of you can carry a tune, there's not many of you, but if any of you can carry a tune of Sorry. any type, I can't. I you said, need to recruit Si. Yeah, I said, yeah. I said, stand up and you can sing anytime you want to. If you're happy, I said, sing a song. I said, but so far in the book of Acts, and I said, by the time we get to the end of it, yeah, I don't read anything about a song service. <laughs> I said, always saying, remember, right. you don't have to have it. Right. No, but I think it should be an experience that comes from the heart. Sure. Know? I mean, it's like when you, I remember you saying this a long time ago. By the you, way, Jason. You've probably forgotten this. You said when you became a Christian it, and you went to the first service that you'd ever been to, you said you opened your mouth and you couldn't sing. It was like. It was such a humbling thing from where you had I been. I was embarrassed yeah. to sing the words in a songbook. I looked down at them and I said, I, 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 But then later I, on, as you grew and that became a part of the, the way you could express your faith and your love for Jesus. I, I, I keep going back to the Trinity because I think it's more of an experience and that worship comes out of that. You know, I'm married to a worship guru. I mean, oh, my yeah. wife, as one far of the as best. music, she can Beautiful sing. Beautiful voice. Look, that's one of the reasons I pursued her and wanted to marry her. Because the first time I heard her sing, I thought, I need a front row seat to that the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, that oh, was yeah. my thought. Yeah. I thought, I, because it was so inspiring and encouraging. When you think about Jesus, I was looking for that verse in Hebrews that said with loud cries and tears, you know, yeah. going through the process. Look, worship it's okay to be emotional. I mean, Jesus wept when he raised Lazarus before he raised Lazarus from the dead. He, he knew he, he was fixed to raise it from the dead. Well, why was he crying? Because Just remember, life has those experiences, and you should be passionate about your relationship with God and the struggles yeah, you're going Just through. remember, in Abraham's case, in Job's case, in the Apostle Paul's case, you say, in Jesus there, is, there case. is Jesus more. Case. And the woman at the well, you say, was there a song service embedded in any of these events? Well, that's, No. Well, that's why <laughs> it, I read, except for the one I read when before he was arrested. He said, yeah. they. it just says they got together and sung a hymn. But I just thought, what would it be like to sing a hymn? Which, you know, it was a cappella. They were out in the woods. And they just sang it mm -hmm. together in that moment. And so then, you remember Acts sixteen, Paul and Barnabas, they just got the fire beat out of them. I mean, you took a beating back in them days. It was a beating. You. They're sitting in the inner cell, locked together, in the middle of the in night. The middle of the night. What are they doing? Singing. singing. Yeah. They were just and singing. it had an impact on the jailer. It, it, it converted him. Him and his whole family. You bet you. But I think the point I brought up about 
about Christian music now is I think, look, as far as, as who we are, if there's a way to make our church services more dynamic and taking some of these songs that are modern that you know kids listen to and, and like – I ran out of that. Grave, I think honestly. you just use it's a great that tool. stuff it as is. much. I, you know, I kind of like our church. We have a acapella service that because I think that's cool. That's the way they've always done. And then they have a second service that's like, they call it contemporary, but right. it's instrumental. And and so I've actually had people say, "Well, I'm not sure. You know that you should be playing musical instruments. You know while while you're having a church service." And uh, so I said, "Well, I'll tell you this." In First Thessalonians four, when Jesus comes back, it said there's something going to happen that's going to signify that. And of course, they're looking at me like, "What does this got to do with musical instruments?" I said, "God's blowing a trumpet." <laughs> I'm like, if there was anything wrong with a musical instrument, the last thing he would be doing when the dead are are coming out of the ground is blowing a trumpet. It's going to be a yeah. musical so note. I said, if you want to come to our church and you want to relax and if that bothers you, we got the first row. But if you want to bring your trumpet, bring it on, buddy. Because the dead are coming out of the ground and we're I never thought here. about it that way, Jason. That's pretty good. That's a good point. So anyway, uh, just a, a, a good discussion on uh, on what where we started with this idea of worship, and I guess the challenge for any of us is we want to live that worshipful lifestyle every day. Remember, God has to be first. That was the key. Cause that's what happened with Abraham. And because you get off base when you worship anything other than God, and you know it might be on a mountainside, it might be at, in a lake, it might be in a right. duck blind. Look, it might be in a hospital you bed. We've all sang hymns to dying kids, yep. and you know we've been a you. part of those moments. That's and right. look, that you can't help but cry. That's right, which is powerful. So that's that's our discussion today. Live and learn, live a worshipful life uh, every single day. I think it, I think you'll be better for it. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast. 